I mean, nobody ever accused Republicans of not knowing how to make a buck or BSing somebody into voting for them. I mean, you know, lying to people for economic or political gain is literally the definition of a grift. And, you know, like whenever there's another mass school shooting or another mass shooting, Republicans send out fundraising letters going, oh, they're trying to take away your guns. Right, followed by another mass slaughter. But it goes beyond just, you know, things like that. I mean, you know, Jared Kushner was underwater because he had bought 666 Fifth Avenue for over a billion dollars and it wasn't even worth a few, you know, <laughs> eight, nine hundred million. Um, he needed money. The mortgage was coming due. And so he got his buddies in Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates to blockade Qatar until Qatar laundered a billion dollars through a Canadian investment firm into Jared's pockets. I mean, it's a grift. Uh, just this week, after Trump deregulated toxic trains, leading to a horrible crash, uh, Steve Bannon, who's already been charged with multiple fraud-related crimes, convicted of one of them, showed up at, and pardoned by Trump, showed up in East Palestine, Ohio, to hustle $300 water filters to the people in that town. I mean, the grift is at the core of the Republican Party's existence. This goes back to Richard Nixon and, you know, blowing up LBJ's peace talks. Uh, Republicans f successfully fought Medicare, negotiating the price of drugs. In turn, Big Pharma poured money into their campaign efforts. Republicans uh, uh, back Democratic, uh, beat back, excuse me, Democratic efforts to stop insurance giants from ripping off seniors with Medicare Advantage, the, the privatization scam. In turn, the insurance companies pour cash down on you know, uh, on Republicans like on an Indian monsoon. Republicans oppose any efforts to stop fossil fuels and protect our environment. And as a result, the fossil fuel industry pours cash into their campaign coffers. Uh, Republicans stopped enforcement of a century's worth of antitrust laws back in 1983. Reagan did this. As a result, you know, Main Street America, small town America wiped out, replaced by Walmarts and things of that sort. And those giant corporations are pouring money into Republican coffers once again. Donald Trump and Ajit Pai ended net neutrality in the United States. So now your internet service provider is spying on everything you do and selling that information to anybody who wants to buy it. And hey, the industry is rewarding the Republicans with lots and lots of cash. I mean, you know, this is, this is news speak. It's, it's, you know, grifting has been a, a recurrent theme through basically every Republican presidency since Richard Nixon. His war on drugs was a grift. It was really a war on black people and hippies, as, as, his, uh, as John Ehrlichman told reporter Dan Blome. Uh, Reagan told us that if we just destroyed unions and moved our manufacturing to China and Mexico, there'd be a, all kinds of new job opportunities here. <laughs> yeah, right. He followed that up by promising that if we just cut taxes on the morbidly rich, Lots of wealth would trickle down to the rest of us. How'd that work out for you? He even assured us that raising the Social Security retirement age to 67, yes, it was Reagan who did that. He put a, you know, it was a 30-year, 40-year time bomb. It didn't, you know, it was done in 1983. It didn't take effect until last year. But, uh, you know, he said that if we raise the retirement age to 67 and we tax Social Security benefits, which started in 83, that that means seniors can retire with greater ease, right? No, it hasn't even kept, you know, Social Security hasn't even kept up with inflation because Reagan, when he reformed Social Security, refused to, to put the cost of living adjustment in, in any reasonable area that reflects actual costs for seniors. These are all grifters' lies. Uh, George W. Bush called his program to make it easier to clear-cut forests the Healthy Forest Initiative. He called his program to legalize more pollution from coal-fired power plants and car exhaust, the Clean Air Act. His scam to, quote, strengthen Medicare was called Medicare Advantage. It's a thinly disguised plan to, to do away with Medicare, to destroy it, to privatize it. Donald Trump told Americans that the coronavirus was under control when he was actually making the situation worse. The Lancet just published a piece last week showing that a half million Americans most of them Republicans died unnecessarily because Donald Trump assured them they didn't need to wear, wa wear masks. They could go back to work. Everything is good. Oh, and by the way, forget about vaccines and things like that. You could just take ivermectin. Jared and Ivanka cashed into the in on their time in the White House to the tune of billions and then got $2 billion the day after Trump left office. 
Other Trump grifts, he made the workplace less safe. He boosted religious schools at the expense of public schools. He cut relief for students who had been ripped off by student loan sharks. He shrank the safety net, the, the, the health safety net, by cutting $60 billion out of food stamps at a time when we needed it the most. He forced workers to put in overtime without getting paid for it. He poured millions uh, more, pol excuse me, poured more pollution from fossil fuels into our fragile atmosphere. He gutted the EPA's science operation. Half their scientists left during Trump's uh, reign of terror. He rescinded the rules that protected work workers at uh, federal, work uh, federal contract sites. He dialed back car air pollution emission standards. He reduced legal immigration of skilled workers from what he called S-hole countries. He blocked regulation of toxic chemicals. He rolled back rules on banks, setting up the crisis, the banking crisis that we're in the midst of right now. And he defenestrated, yeah, he pushed them out the window, uh, rules against racially segregated housing. I mean, Nixon was just a crook, right? But since then, you know, since 1978, when Lewis Powell authored the Bellotti decision, the Supreme Court decision that said corporations can legally own politicians, uh, the Republican Party has been all in on this. You know, the Democrats kind of put their toe in that water with the Bill Clinton administration in large part because the unions were supporting Democrats and, and Reagan and Bush had successfully destroyed about half the unions in America by the time Clinton came along. So he really needed to go to corporations for money. But then Barack Obama showed that we can raise money online. I mean, this is a new thing, right? And so a lot of Democrats, about half the Democratic Party is now saying no thanks to big corporations and, you know, joining the Progressive Caucus. And, and you know, the Democratic Party is slowly but surely moving back to its FDR and, and great society roots, while the Republican Party is still 100% in on, you know, on the big scam. I mean, Bannon's grift in East Palestine showing up to sell water filters after, you know, his boss, Donald Trump, deregulated the railroad leading to the crash. This is a small time grift. But there's a big time grift going on that is literally the core of the GOP. You know, when you've got absolutely nothing to offer people except death, destruction, and, and uh, you know, uh, ruining the American middle class by cutting taxes on billionaires, when that's all you've got, oh, and a little hate thrown in for, for you know, to get the voters, then, hey, let's run a grift and make some money while we're doing it, right? <laughs>